this uh, Holy Mass for all our beloved men offering our altar, and we also pray for the soul of General Van Trapp. In this second weekend of the month, we pray for all those celebrating their wedding anniversary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, in communion with the Holy Spirit, be with you. Yeah, with your spirit. My dear friends, we are called to be bearers of the light of Christ, not carriers to a darkened world. Sometimes we are careless and irresponsible and allow this precious light of Christ to grow dim or even to go out altogether. Through a spirit of prayer and watchfulness, Christ will help us to keep this light burning brightly. Lord Jesus, you call us to keep the lamp of faith burning brightly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to keep the lamp of hope burning brightly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You call us to keep the lamp of love burning brightly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to be full of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhither in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the age of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed. For he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence. And whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. Because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her and graciously appears to them in the ways and the meets and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. O 
My soul is thirsty for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsty for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. And with exultant lips, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsty for you, O Lord my God. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you, and you are my help. And in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul is thirsty for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, Bring him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this, on the word of the Lord, that we are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God will come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. this parable, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flask of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, 
Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I just realized the other day that we are very close to the end of the church calendar as well as close to the end of 2020. So I said to myself, where did the months, the days go? I should have done this, I should have done that. Listen to this, if any of them resonate with you. The doctor told me to get more exercise. I think that I can work it into my schedule next month. I'll visit my sick aunt the next time I happen to be in her neighborhood. I need to apologize to my sister. I'm waiting for the opportunity to present itself. After Christmas is over, I'll make a New Year's resolution that I will be more careful about how I spend my money. I know that I have a problem with anger. One of these days, I'll talk it over with God. My dear friends, we are now on the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And as we know that there are 34 Sundays in Ordinary Time. And the 34th Sunday is the celebration of Christ the King. So we only have two Sundays left. In these last three Sundays, the Gospel readings comes from the chapter 25 of Matthew, which tells us three parables. So today, the parable of the ten bridesmaids. The second, the parable of talents. And the third, the judgment. So as we approach the culmination of our liturgical year, the Lord teaches us today to be vigilant, prepared, and the necessity of waiting. Waiting is something that we in our present generation does not want to do anymore. If we are made to wait, we say, oh, I cannot wait. I don't have the patience to wait. It brings the worst in us. In this culture of instant, fast communication, speed, we say, waiting is no longer a virtue. It is considered a waste of time. But when it comes to wisdom, we need waiting, not uselessly, but hopefully. How are we preparing for the Lord's coming? In our first reading, wisdom from above is presented as a living person, very near us, actively moving around, searching for us, very often we complain, oh, it's difficult to find wisdom. Wisdom is available for anyone who seeks it with openness and honesty. So we must also search for divine wisdom. We must love, we must wait for it in love and in hope. Are we searching for God's wisdom? Or do we long for God's wisdom? In our second reading, St. Paul presents to us the hope that enables the Thessalonians to wait patiently. And that is the hope in the risen Lord. St. Paul reminds them that the waiting should not end up in prostration because he will really come to take the living and the dead to his presence. We might have experience waiting for someone who does not come for appointment, waiting for something that does not arrive. What a waste of time. The waiting that St. Paul is telling us is not 
empty. It is not useless. It is waiting in hope. Who among you is good in having patience? Patience in waiting. Anyone? So I think that is what we have to work on. Not just waiting, but to be patient in waiting. And not only that, to have hope in waiting. So the virtue of waiting in hope for Jesus, who is the wisdom of God, will surely fulfill His promise. In the Gospel, we have a parable based on a custom, a wedding custom of Jewish people at the time. According to the custom, the groom would go to the bride's house to negotiate with the bride's father, and then the groom would bring the bride with him to his home, and the celebration would begin. On their approach to the home of the husband, the couple were to be met by ten virgins carrying lamps. Do you still remember your wedding day, the preparation, and all the negotiation to your in-laws perhaps? Now, in our story, the bridegroom's arrival was long delayed, and when finally the coming was announced, two groups of bridesmaids emerged as wise and foolish. Wise were those who brought extra oil with them, and foolish indeed were those who did not. The oil in the story cannot be interpreted literally. If we think of it as a material object that could be shared, we are going to think how selfish of those five wise virgins. But it is something symbolic, that is something that cannot be given to someone else. It is something that we have to work for life, a loving relationship with God, or the good works we have done, or the wisdom we have gained through prayers. So it's a very personal thing that we work hard and we earn for it that we cannot share it, we cannot give it to anyone. My brothers and sisters, in our long journey in life, there are times when we become foolish due to lack of foresight. We tend to be contented to what is just enough, or we say just the minimum, as long as there is something and we do not care for bigger things any farther. And as a result, very few endeavors to have the most important thing one can have in life. Jesus is inviting us to have a forward-looking disposition in life by prudently desiring the best our heart can choose. Wisdom is a choice to do all it takes to enter the kingdom of God. And we have here St. Thomas' prayer for wisdom. He said, Lord, help me to change my bad habits. Grant me the courage to accept the things I cannot change and the wisdom to know the difference. We should engage in having good foresight and persevering good works to keep our faith alive. St. Augustine also said, Pray as though everything depends on God, and act as though everything depends on you. Pray as though everything depends on God, and act as though everything depends on you. This is the best way to make ourselves ready and prepared to the Lord, no matter when the Lord chooses to come. So wait patiently, be vigilant, and prepare, for the Lord will surely come. Please stand. Together we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. He God does not create, consciousness of the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Gospel message reminds us to be wise and vigilant. Christ will come again. As we wait for him, we pray to the Lord yes and yes. We pray for our Holy Father and the bishops of the Church. May they care for the people entrusted to them with the love of Christ and keep the lamp of faith burning brightly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For civic and healthcare leaders who coordinate responses to the pandemic, may God give them wisdom, strength, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the veterans who give service to our country receive the honor and appreciation they are due. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary this November, may they grow in love, continue to give, be able to forgive, and find happiness with the passing of each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May we live in the state of readiness for the coming of God's kingdom into our lives, remaining watchful, but never fearful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick, the aged, and those wounded by rejection. May they experience the compassion of Jesus through those who comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the faithful departed, especially Gerald Van Toff, may the risen Christ welcome them into the great wedding feast of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We now pray silently for our own intentions and those fell deep within our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father of time and eternity, grant the petitions we make as we wait for the coming of Christ, your gift of eternal wisdom, your deep lives and ways forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have been spread to offer you, through the beard and work of the human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this wine to offer you. For it to be divine and work of a human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed 
Pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the life of God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating the mystery, the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he broke the new world, the humanity's fallen state, and by the suffering concealed up our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by sending to your Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the name of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May call it therefore this gift to pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and revealed in his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and the Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer the Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ? We may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, High Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have teach you throughout the ages. We may merit to be your spirit life and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, the deity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Remember us, Lord, when you come into your kingdom and teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive to those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by God through your mercy you may be we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I give you my peace, I give you. Look not our sins, but the faith of your church, and gracefully brought your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they called in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be Those of you who are watching from home, please join me in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.